The worst and most damning policies start out with the best of intentions. If it stops even one plane from being hijacked, if it stops one child from being harmed, if it saves even one life. Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I wanted to eat my words and admit that where I've been very, very wrong. So there's a video I did a while ago saying that I respect the efforts that Apple is putting in to protect user privacy. This was a video where I said something very positive about Apple because I think that at that point in time, they had earned it. I'm not just going to bash on them for everything they do wrong. They do something cool that I don't see other companies doing. I will give them credit. It is now time for me to eat my words and admit that I was wrong. I was very, very, very wrong. I was trying to give credit where I thought credit was due, and uh, that was, well... Let's just read this article. This is from the Financial Times. It says Apple plans to scan U.S. iPhones for child abuse imagery. Security researchers raise alarm over potential surveillance of personal devices. Apple intends to install software on American iPhones to scan for child abuse imagery, according to people briefed on its plans, raising the alarm among security researchers who warn that it could open the door to surveillance of millions of people's personal devices. Apple detailed this proposed system, known as Neural Match, to some U.S. academics earlier this week. According to two security researchers briefed, briefed on the virtual meeting. Birthed. My God. The automated system would proactively alert a team of human reviewers if it believes illegal imagery is detected, who would then contact law enforcement if the material can be verified. The scheme will initially roll out only in the U.S. Apple confirmed its plans in a blog post, saying the scanning technology is part of a new suite of child protection systems that would evolve and expand over time. Evolve and expand over time. Let's be really mindful of their terminology there. The features will be rolled out as a part of iOS 15, expected to be released next month. This innovative new technology allows Apple to provide valuable and actionable information to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and law enforcement regarding the proliferation of known CSAM, the company said. And it does so while providing significant privacy benefits over existing techniques, since Apple only learns about users' photos if they have a collection of known CSAM in their iCloud Photos account. The proposals are Apple's attempt to find a compromise between its own promise to protect customers' privacy and demands from governments, law enforcement agencies, and child safety campaigners for more assistance in criminal investigations, including terrorism and child pornography. The tension between tech companies such as Apple and Facebook, which have defended their increasing use of encryption in their products and services, and law enforcement has only intensified since the iPhone maker went to court with the FBI in 2016 over access to a terrorist suspect's iPhone following a shooting in San Bernardino, California. Security researchers, while supportive of efforts to combat child abuse, are concerned that Apple risks enabling governments around the world to seek access to the citizens' personal data, potentially far beyond its original intent. It is absolutely appalling idea because it is going to lead to distributed bulk surveillance of our phones and laptops, says Ross Anderson, professor of security engineering at the University of Cambridge. Although the system is currently trained to spot child sex abuse, trained, we're going to focus on that language, it could be adapted, adapted to scan for any other target imagery and text. For instance, terror beheadings or anti-government signs of protests as researchers. Apple's president could also increase pressure on other tech companies to use similar techniques. This will break the dam. Governments will demand it from everyone, said Matthew Green, a security professor at John Hopkins University, who is believed to be the first researcher to post a tweet about the issue. Alec Muffet, a security researcher and privacy campaigner who formerly worked at Facebook and Deliveroo, said Apple's move is tectonic and a huge regressive step for individual privacy. Apple are walking back privacy to enable 1984, he said. Cloud-based storage systems and social networking sites already scan for child abuse imagery, but that process becomes more complex when trying to access data stored on a personal device. Let's focus on this over here. Cloud-based, okay, so if you're talking about a social network, working site, you are, that's not really, that, that's stuff that you've put on someone else's platform for public dissemination versus stuff that you're putting on your own device that's supposedly being backed up to your own personal backup. Apple's system is less invasive and in that the screening is done on the phone and only if there is a match is a notification set back to those searching, said Alan Woodward, a computer security professor at the University of Surrey. This decentralized approach is about the best approach you could adopt if you do go down this route. Apple's neural match algorithm will continuously scan photos that are scored in a, on a U.S. user's iPhone and have also been uploaded to its iCloud backup system. Users' photos converted into a string of numbers through a process known as hashing will be compared to those in a database of known images of child sexual abuse. Okay, so this is a little different over here, and this is going to be something we have to discuss. So you have neural match, which kind of implies machine learning or AI. We use the word train in this article, but here we're talking about hashing, which is not really machine learning. It's literally, it's, it, it's very dumb. It's just compare this file to that file. If equal, then report. A system has trained 200,000, has been trained on 200,000 sex abuse images collected by the NCMEC. Again, if we're talking about hashing, 
then what is this training that we're talking about? According to people briefed in the plans, every photo uploaded to iCloud in the US will be given a safety voucher saying whether it is suspect or not. Once a certain number of photos are marked as suspect, Apple will enable all suspect photos to be decrypted, and if apparently illegal, passed on to the relevant authorities. So let's go over this for a little bit. So the first thing here is, are we talking about hashing or are we talking about actual machine learning where we're trying to figure out whether or not something is or is not something rather than just a hash. A hash means this file is identical to this file. It, you don't have to have some sort of fancy schmancy AI, neural network or machine learning system to do that. That's something as basic as, you know, comparing this to that. Is it identical? Is it equals? Yes or no? That is different from this. Why? Well, let's just talk about how these kind of machine learning AI systems can be screwed up in general. Uh, if, if you've ever used a Tesla and tried autopilot or full self-driving, you, you, you probably understand just how much these systems are in their infancy. If you're on YouTube and you create content here, let's say you're Eli the computer guy, and you create a 20-minute long video explaining that you thought it was a good idea that you got the vaccine because you're going to be doing Silicon Dojo, so you're going to be in a room with other people that you're teaching, so it made sense to get the COVID vaccine so that you would not be a transmission vector to other people. After saying that, his video got marked as COVID misinformation, and it got a strike. Well, he asked that it be reviewed by an independent. Same as here, right? You know, a human is going to look at it and verify it. Just like the human that works at YouTube that confirmed that they verified that Eli's video broke their guidelines for COVID misinformation. He said he was getting vaccinated because he was going to be in a room with people. Yeah. This is not something that I'm a fan of. And uh, this is, again, when, when even if we are talking about a system where we are only using hashes, where we're only comparing a specific file that is a known child abuse image to what is on your phone, what is the language that's being used here? Again, this is not me saying it. This is their quote. It says, would evolve and expand over time. What does that mean? Does that mean that we are going to go from using hashes to using machine learning and then randomly tagging things on your phone that are not child porn as child porn and reporting you every time there's a mistake because there is going to be a margin of error for this stuff? Or does that mean that we are not only going to apply this to child porn? Maybe we'll apply it to lockdown protesters. Maybe we'll apply it to BLM protesters. Maybe we'll apply it to Antifa. Maybe we'll apply it to anti-war protesters. Maybe we'll apply it to anybody who protests against something that's going on in the government. Or maybe somebody walks in the room and is like, hey, listen, we have this system that we're able to use to track people with regards to child porn. Listen, I know that's only supposed to be for child porn. J j just this once. This is a serious issue. This is something that we, we really need to find this person. So can we, this, this is a dangerous person. You agree, right? So can we get access to that system just to be able to do that? You know that the moment that you make this available for this, it is going to be used for a bunch of other stuff. You do not want to open this door. You do not want to open this door. And there's something that I've noticed over the past 20 years in, in the U.S., which is that we always notice this once it's too late because we're afraid to say something in the beginning because we don't want to be seen as being against a well-intentioned policy. When 9-11 happened and we were talking about the Patriot, listen, freedom isn't free. How many people have a bumper sticker, freedom isn't free? You mean, you don't, are you against America? Do you want the Twin Towers to get... Do you, want, do you want other buildings to blow up? Do you want other people to try and blow up things in our country? Do you want other planes to get hijacked? Are you against that? Of course you're not. Of course you're going to be okay with all this stuff. When it comes to this, what, you, 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 are, you, are you for child porn? Do you have child porn on your phone? Are you, you're not against it because of privacy. You're against this because you're for child porn. What is on your phone? What are you hiding? With COVID. Hey, look, look you, you do, you're, you're against lockdowns? Are, are you against lock? Are, are you not locking your business? Are you not? Are you opening? Do you want grandma to die? Do you want hundreds of thousands of people to die just so that your laptop repair business can be open? I actually had someone say that to me on Reddit today, completely unaware of the fact that the state that we were, uh, that didn't have all that stuff happened actually had a lower per capita death rate than we did. So, but uh, this is how this happens. You, do, do you want to kill grandma? Do you want to see kids get raped? Do you want to see buildings get blown up? Just give us a little bit of your freedom. Give us a little bit more of your freedom. Oh, you, you, you wouldn't be against that if, if you weren't for buildings getting blown up. You weren't for children being molested. If you weren't for grandma dying. And the thing is, people don't speak up in the beginning. They never say something in the beginning because they are afraid of being cast out of polite society. They say something two or four or five or eight or 10 years later. Once the results of these policies that were sold to us based on them being well-meaning are actually hurting us. By then, once people start noticing and saying, I'm not afraid to speak up, this is BS. It's too late. 
because the policy is already instituted. And the people in power that instituted that policy are not giving their power back. This is what happens when you accept the premise of assholes. And as I say on this channel, never accept the premise of assholes. You need to give up your privacy in this way. Oh, you don't want to? Okay, that must mean that you want to see America get attacked. Freedom isn't free. You must not like freedom. You must not like America. You must want to see planes get hijacked. You need to give up your privacy in this way. Or, oh, oh you must like for child porn. You must be one of those people that touches kids. You must enjoy it, you sick bastard. You need to give up your ability to jog down the street while wearing a mask on an empty block. And if you don't do that, oh, you must want grandma to die. You disagree with the lockdown policy? You must want to kill old people. We have to stop accepting the premise of assholes that are being manipulative by utilizing univariate analysis to a multivariate world. They are looking at one variable. They are looking at one KPI. They are looking at one thing and trying to figure out how we can address this one thing while pretending that the measures that they are using to address one, this one thing don't have other effects across the broader society. But they do. And when you look into the future and you look into how this can be abused and you look into how this can be misused and you look into how any sort of error in this could result in someone having a bad experience with law enforcement that may end up with them being in jail, you are not someone that thinks that children should not be protected. No. You are not going to accept the premise of assholes. What you are going to do is look them in the face back and you are going to say, no, I care about children. Why don't you care about people's privacy? Why don't you care about us not being an authoritarian surveillance state? Why don't you care about wrongful imprisonment that will result as a result of this policy? So when you scroll through the comments of this video, you'll see, why is this insane? We need to stop fetishizing freedom at any cost. We live in a society that comes with responsibility. If you have child abuse on your phone, you should be rightly caught and prosecuted. People are afraid of pushing back against that because they believe that if you push back against this, it is because you support child porn. It is because you have child porn on your phone. Why scream if you have nothing to hide, someone says. And this response that got 30 times the upvotes, and it should have, said, since you have nothing to hide, please invite me over so I can do a thorough inspection of your home. And another person here asked the same question that I asked, which I think is a good question. It sounds like just a hash will be checked in the phone known to abuse images. This would mean the photo file would have to be an exact copy of a known image, which again, doesn't sound that bad. So it sounds like you would either have to have to have downloaded an abuse image and uploaded it somewhere where it could be recognized. So it wouldn't be trying to spot abuse in your holiday pics if, if you take them with some neural algo on your phone. I'm not sure what side of this I'm on. I'm not, not a fan of that. But if I'm reading it right, it's a slightly thinner end of the wedge. Makes sense. But then this person says, then why call it neural match? I'm assuming or guessing in practice it involves a combination of machine learning algorithms to detect unique photos and video and then exact match hashes. Me personally, I don't want to give this a chance. I don't want to see what happens as the system moves on. I don't want to figure out how this will evolve and expand over time. Because if the last 20 years have showed us anything in America, it's that when we give an inch, we lose a mile. We give up this much of our freedom for this one thing that sounds good right here. Look what happens later on. Look what happens later on. Do you get it back? Once the threat is no longer there, do you get back your freedom? Do they stop spying on you? Is there not a huge data center in Utah looking through all of your shit all the time? No. You don't get it back. And you never will. This is going to evolve and expand in ways that you would have never thought imaginable. If you think that this is just going to be used for child porn, you are way more optimistic than I could ever imagine being on this particular issue. And perhaps I wind up being wrong. Perhaps 10 or 20 or 40 or 50 years from now, we don't live in a surveillance state. We don't live in a state where they have access to all this type of stuff. And let's say uh, you wind up having a dissenting political opinion, a dissenting cultural opinion that we, that, you know, that, that your stuff just gets looked through and used to spot you and also, or I mean, just God forbid how this could be used maliciously. Just, we already have swatting. So swatting is this whole thing where someone's playing a game online. If you know their name, you know their full name, and you know they're online right now, well, you can call a SWAT team and say, or you can call 911 and say, this person's threatening whatever in their house, and the SWAT team breaks into their house with guns, and there are people who have died over this. There are people out there that may do malicious shit. 
I, I mean, I, I could just tell you a vector right now where this is going to happen. So every now and then, I'll be on a live stream and I'll say that, you know, I wish I had this schematic. I don't have a schematic to fix this machine. And every now and then, people will actually email me the schematic that I need. But sometimes, you know, 5% of the time that I get emailed the schematic, they'll say, here's the schematic for what you were looking on on screen. Like, here's your eight, and I'll get a file, 820-01958.pdf. And I'll open it, and it won't be a MacBook schematic. It'll be something that looks similar to Goatsy or Tubgirl. Don't Google that, by the way, if you don't know what it is. And yeah, you got me to download it. You got me to open it. You tricked me. But there's not real. There's no real consequence to that because my, nothing is being scanned on my device all the time. Hell, I remember when I was 13 years old, I was a shit on the internet. I was an. I was a fucking. Pe- I was a total piece of crap. I like. I we did so much immature shit in this IRC channel that I was. So this is one forum that I was on, and this one guy that was a complete asshole to everybody. So I remember just sending him a message from an, a different user account than mine and an image SRC link in it so that the image would show up. So as long as he read the message, I would know what his IP address was. And then we had a web server, so I used mod rewrite and put his IP in there so that when I posted an image in a popular forum thread for the week, everybody else would just see the normal image. I think it was a flower or something, but what he would see is Goatsy. And then he said, "Oh well, my God, why'd you post that? And I said, all I posted was a flower. And he said, no, you didn't. And I said, okay, prove it. And then he posts what... Uh, he saw, and that actually got him banned from the forum because he posted Goatsy to the forum. And, uh, you know, this is, this is like this little, it, it, was a, it was a prank. It was a joke. It was like, it was like screwing around. But like, what if, what if this does become a prank? Like, you know that stuff is being automatically scanned all the time. So you find one of those things and you send it to someone you don't like and it gets reviewed. And like, there are so many ways for this to be abused, not just by people who are looking to prank other people maliciously, but there's also a lot of ways for it to be abused by the government, which is known for their abuses when it comes to privacy. This is not good. This is not good. I am not for this. And here's what I'm going to ask of all of you. Here's what usually happens. Usually what happens is we have that first stage where there is a really well, there's a, there's a law, there's a policy, there's an idea, there's a mandate, and it's well-meaning. And it's crafted. It's crafted in a way where for you to be against this well-meaning mandate or this well-meaning law, you must be against the intention. When in reality, you're not against the intention of the law, you're against what you know is going to be the outcome. When you're against this, it's not because you're against, uh, you, you, because you're for child pornography, you're against preventing child pornography, it's because you're against the abuses that will be used here to destroy people's privacy and freedom. When you were against the surveillance state after 9-11, it wasn't because you supported terrorism, it wasn't because you wanted to see buildings blow up or planes be hijacked, it was because you knew that it would be abused and that after the threat was gone, that that was never going to go away. When you were against the lockdowns, it wasn't because you wanted to see grandma die because you loved sickness and death, it was because you knew that this would destroy the economy, create lots of strife, increase crime when you have more people impoverished, and just be a horrible affront to freedom. And what we usually tend to do is, in the beginning, people are afraid to speak up because they're afraid that if they speak up, that that'll mean, it'll mean that you're a bad human being. And then it's only once one or two or five or ten years have passed, and it's too late to take the power back from the government that we say something. But by then it's too late. Can we speak up on this now? Can we speak up loudly and proudly and say that we are against child pornography in every way, shape, and form. And we think it's disgusting and horrible if someone has it on their phone. And if someone has it on their phone and it's because it was they willfully, intentionally used that crap or spread that crap, that they should be reported to the authorities. While at the same time, simultaneously disagreeing with the idea of having some neural shit scanning our device every time, scanning every single picture, and then flagging it to be reported to the authorities if this thing that they've created thinks that something on there is wrong. This will not go well. If you think that this is going to go well, I'm open to being proven wrong. You're a much bigger optimist than I am. I think the true red pill here that is really difficult to swallow is that there isn't some sort of grand conspiracy. There aren't some people like rubbing their hands and working together behind the scenes to take away our freedoms, our privacy, and our rights in any meaningful way. I think we ask them to do it. I think we do it to ourselves. And when you read the comment section on almost any news aggregation website, when you just read comments on things like this, where you can actually see people saying, yes, please take away my privacy. Yes, please take away my rights because you mentioned something with a good intention attached to it. That's the real red pill. It's not someone from high up above that's advocating for all of this all the time. We do it to ourselves. And it's about time that we stop. 
Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And as always, here's Cuomo. Now, they can say unemployment insurance isn't enough. I get it. Uh, even with the $600 check and the $1,200 check and the unemployment insurance benefit is not enough. I understand the economic hardship. We all feel it. The question is, what do you do about it? And do you put public health at risk? And do you drive up the number of deaths for it? Because you have no idea how to reopen now. So they're saying that, is there a fundamental right to work if the government can't get me the money when I need it? Is there yeah, a you fundamental want to go, by the way, right you want to, to go, go to work? work? Go take a job as an essential worker. Do it tomorrow. Right? You're working. I am. You're an essential worker. So go take a job as an but, essential but, worker. But the people aren't hiring because of the No, pandemic. there are people hiring. You can get a job as an essential worker. So now you can go to work and you can be an essential worker and you're not going to kill anyone. Try reading the comment section on any news aggregation site that is discussing this particular issue. And this is, like, this is worse than Joy-Con drift. What? Is Nintendo making mic stands now? <laughs> uh, take two.